No, they were unique challenges. Um, many of the challenges, and just kind of give you a historical background on teachers after the Brown case, uh, black teachers did not get jobs in 501 till later. And then when they finally did get jobs, if you were teaching at a school of white students, you had to have a parent consent slip sign uh, letting the parents, or well, parents giving you permission to work with their kids. So let's zoom forward from there. Um, I, I, I think with, with teaching, there are always challenges that black educators had that maybe their white counterparts didn't have. I can recall um, applying for an administrative position and in the interview, I was asked, um, do you think playing basketball would get in the way of you being a good administrator? You know, I played basketball in college and was an All-American, all that sort of thing. And I don't know why I said it, but I retorted back and I said, does golf get in your way of doing what you do? And the room got kind of quiet and a few nervous laughter. But there was always this thing out there and, and it's a historical thing to try to negatively devalue who you are, your skill set. And you always have to play through that. And, and I, I would go on record to say that I probably got passed up for a few things because I wasn't willing to compromise and play certain games. And then maybe the overarching thing was I enjoyed being where the students were. Do you think the students um, that gained a a different perspective or value seeing you as an African-American male teacher? No question. Okay. Uh, because, now I'll, I'll just take it to the high school level and we can go to any of the levels, mm -hmm. but at the high school, uh, <clears throat> there were some kids who were affiliated with gangs. And uh, some of the teachers were always trying to set policies to get them to pull their pants up. Are we gonna allow them to sag? Well, first of all, we don't allow them to. They do it, and now how, how are we going to help them uh, figure out a more excellent way? Well, every day I went to work, I was clean. And I used to have my counterparts say, well, why do you wear a suit every day? Why do you wear a sports coat? Why do you look? And what they don't understand is I had to model what I expected. And so in the district, they didn't even know this. But certain Saturdays, I would take the 15-passenger van and take some of those kids to Kansas City to Penner's Menswear. I had a relationship with them there, and anything, they put stuff out on sale racks so these kids can buy a pair of pants for $10, suit for $25, whatever. And what happened was some of these, these gang kids or the kids who were dressing inappropriate started to dress better because they saw a model, they liked that. I can't tell you the number of times that I've uh, lent kids suits to wear to prom, my own personal suits, and so forth. But if you're in it to win it, those are things you do. You have to model what you expect from the kids. Having the models that I had was certainly a, an asset because you could always just feel them behind you saying, what would so-and-so do? <laughs>